Yo! Whoa! Whoa! Party people! Wow! Amazing! Thanks so much, everyone. I went from a thousand followers yesterday to like a 1300 or something. I don't even know. It's probably like 1200 or something, but amazing. Um, it feels really good. And we started our, uh, our um, Facebook group yesterday, and that's got probably 50 people by now or something, which is cool. I'm, ex I'm excited to talk to people about random stuff, um, help people out, discuss things. I'll try to post there um, more inf interesting things that I come across. Um, but anyway, yeah. And I'm going to do a lot more um, different types of videos in the future. Like I want to do a grocery haul video. Somebody, somebody um, recommended that and I thought that'd be a fun idea. And I want to do, I'll still do what I eat in a days. I'm having a really hard time doing them because it's having me having to remember to video record every time. I eat something or do something and it's really hard for me. I don't know why, but I always forget. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, shit, I have half, half a video. So maybe I could just string together a million <laughs> random bits and pieces, but getting an actual what I eat in a day is tough for me. Um, but I could do like a grocery haul and kind of like what I buy, how I eat it, stuff like that. That'd be fun. Um, this is a cool little spot. So quiet. And uh, yeah, it's been going really good. And I'm getting a lot of positive feedback and stuff. And my, um, my account is monetized now, so I can do live chats. And I'm really excited to do one of those. I don't know when I'll do it because it's hard for me to... I mean, I, I don't know if I could do it while I was walking. Maybe I could. I wonder if I can. I don't know. I, I feel like I'd have to have um, Wi-Fi for, that to be, for it to be not all messed up. Because I've noticed... And, and comment down below, please, if, you, if my videos are really grainy. I know that you can switch um, the, the uh, quality on YouTube, but I look, I've been watching back on some of my videos just on my phone, and some of them are really grainy. Um, and I don't know if it's because I'm using the other part of my phone, um, the backside. And so today I'm going to record it this way and see if that makes a difference. But also maybe I have some sort of um, thing on my phone turned down for how how it records or whatever. I think it's recording in high def, but I'm not sure. I should get a better phone too. This phone's getting kind of crap. Um, but yeah, anyway, let me know if, if I could do better with my um, with the with the phone quality because um, I would like that. I don't want it to look all grainy. Um, but again, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, I did this on a complete whim, and it's going a lot better than I thought it would go. So um, I'm, I'm learning as I go. Anyway, thanks everyone. And um, today's video, let's talk about something. Um, so I had a great question from a woman that I'm, that I'm helping or talking to. And um, the question was, how can you tell the difference between uh, a catabolic adrenaline based energy versus uh, true metabolic energy? And that was a great question. And hopefully I can do a video that kind of um, does that justice because I, I think I gave her a really good response. And in my mind, I was like, I should have made that into a video because um, sometimes I get rambling and I'm, I'm, I'm right on the right track. And then sometimes I'm rambling and it's like, I'm not hitting the points I want to hit as, as easily because I have so many thoughts going all over the place um, and so many things I want to say. But let's start <clears throat> with what cortisol and adrenaline does. So in the beginning, cortisol and adrenaline always feels good, right? That's why people chase cortisol and adrenaline um, because it's, it, a, lot, a lot of times it pairs with dopamine for the sh in the short term. And we love those, those dopamine hits like... Um, like skydiving, um, gambling, you know, anything that you can be addicted to is, is, feels amazing in the short term because your adrenaline's sky high, your dopamine's peaked, um, you're feeling great. Um, so when you're on a diet, either like a low calorie diet, which is a cortisol indu inducing diet because uh, cortisol is needed to utilize gluconeogenesis, 
which is where your body creates its own sugar from, mu uh, from protein, your muscle or dietary protein. Um, so that artificially raises cortisol and you become in a high cortisol state. Adrenaline is almost always paired with cortisol. Adrenaline is usually needed to raise cortisol. And uh, so you could be in a calorie deficit diet, you could be in a low energy diet, meaning low, low carbohydrate diet. Your body has to make its own energy again. Um, yes, some of it is being utilized <coughs> by ketones and fat, but you always, always, always need some amount of sugar to live. So again, higher cortisol state, high protein diets, high, high cortisol state, um, or you are excuse me, <clears throat> using stimulants, you know, to get through your day. Caffeine is a great, is a huge one and, uh, nicotine and, um, um, drugs, prescription drugs or otherwise. People utilize stimulants because they feel good because they, uh, raise cortisol and adrenaline. So that's a hard one for some people to understand because they feel good. A lot of the times they're feeling great. They're feeling like I got energy. I'm, I'm going, I'm moving. I don't need a lot of calories. Um, but the, the inevitable, the inevitable part of cortisol and adrenaline based energy is there will be a crash. It can be in the form of at night after a meal, you just, or, you know, you got the midday slump everybody talks about, um, or you get cranky, you get mood changes. I, I honestly think bipolar depression, um, mood changes. A lot of that is because of cortisol and adrenaline and because of a low metabolic state. So you'll get those kind of things. Um, you'll get cravings and, uh, and addictions. I really, again, I feel, I have this hypothesis that all, almost all, I'm not gonna say all for anything, but almost all cravings and addictions are our body just screaming for energy. It's trying to tell you that it needs something. You can't interpret that as, it's like asking a baby why it's crying. You don't know. But most of the time it's crying because <clears throat> it, well, it either needs energy, food, or it wants to be held or whatever. But it's kind of like that with, with your body. Your body's screaming for something. You're so ingrained to knowing, to thinking that it, you don't want to eat excess calories. So you give it stimulants or you give it whatever addiction that you're into. And that kind of helps because it covers it up. It, it, it spikes your adrenaline and cortisol and dopamine and you feel good again. You're like, all right, I'm good again. But there's always the crash. There's always the downslide. And inevitably, there's the binge too if you're restricting. You will never, ever be able to handle it forever. Um, Matt Stone had a great quote that was like, um, restricting calories is like holding your breath underwater. The more you try to, to resist, the, the harder it becomes and eventually you have to come up for air meaning eventually you'll binge it's exactly true it's so true uh, everybody knows it nobody's on a calorie restriction diet for life and uh and gets away with it so that's what cortisol and adrenaline and energy feels like yes short term it's a great thing uh adrenaline is actually really beneficial in the short term it can keep you alive it can um oh sorry come here Zig. come here Come here, come here, come here, faster, faster. Sorry, sorry. You guys probably saw that coming. We shouldn't be walking this trail. It's a, a biker only trail. But it's so nice and peaceful up here. So anyway, um, switch that over to uh, a youthful, metabolic, high energy, normal, what we should all feel all the time. Um, once you get to that stage is a completely different place. It's um, one, there's no crashes. You have constant energy. You have good, clean energy. It's, it's, a, it's a motivating energy. It's not just like, it's not a crack energy. It's not like you're, you're um, jonesing, you're, you're, you're jittery. It's like you have, come here, come here, sorry. Ugh. No, I missed. Come here. Ah, yes. You have an abundance. You're waking up, waking up in bed and actually wanting to get up. 
and you're actually wanting to do stuff. You're wanting to exercise, which for most people, that's crazy. Most people are like, ah, I don't want to exercise. Exercise is tiring, exhausting, but most people have so much energy that they actually want to get out and they want to exercise. And you won't have those crashes. You won't have those midday crashes um, once you get there. You will always just have energy. Your body will utilize the carbohydrates that you, that you give it instantly um, and, and turn, them, turn those into energy and, and put them in your, in your um, correct um, storage areas like your muscles and liver. And I'm gonna see, make sure this is still recording good. That's the thing I hate most about doing it this way. If it stops recording, that would suck. Um, and that's why exercise, once you get to that point, is so important because then you can, then you can put more energy away um, into your muscles and you have more energy to spare and you're more in, er, insulin sensitive. So that's one of the big, reasons, big things when you get to that spot. Another thing that I've noticed for a lot of people and myself, um, addictions disappear. Sorry. Stupid loud planes. Addictions disappear. They feel like they disappear. Um, I've, I've talked to many people, all of them say, I kind of don't need coffee anymore. I don't feel like I need coffee anymore. I, some people have said they forget to drink coffee. Lifelong coffee drinkers forget to drink coffee. And that seems crazy because you know, everybody knows how much of a stranglehold coffee has on people. Coffee, people will kill, literally probably kill somebody for coffee. Um, some people. Um, people make coffee their lives. People say, don't talk to me in the morning until I have my cup of coffee. <laughs> That's cortisol and adrenaline talking right there. So, yeah, I'd see this a lot. And also, not just those kind of cravings, cravings for other foods disappear. Cravings for fatty foods, trash foods. You don't get the, the binge cravings, they disappear. And other actual literal addictions start disappearing because your brain has the energy it's been craving all along. Um, it's, that's one of the very important factors that I think is often overlooked in, in fixing people's mental health. They need adequate energy. And that's really important. I should talk more about that because it's probably more important than just fat loss. It definitely is more important than just fat loss. Brain health is so important, incredibly. Um, so yeah, you might actually find that you don't feel addicted to whatever you're addicted to. I, I like walking the streets. It's cool. Um, and last, let's see, lastly, that's kind of it. You know, you, you just have an abundance of natural go energy. You feel happy. You feel motivated. Um, there's no jitters. There's no slumps. Um, your, your brain's functioning correctly. You're not, you don't have the brain fog. That's when you know you're in the high met metabolic state. You're in the zone. Um, so yeah, that's it for that. I'm gonna try to keep, I'm trying to keep it a little bit shorter um, because a lot of my videos get way too rambly. I know some people love them rambly, but um, I'm just gonna try to put out more content, shorter, a little bit shorter videos sometimes. Sometimes I'll go way too rambly, but um, yeah, that's the difference between a high cortisol and adrenaline state and a, and a high metabolic state energy wise. All right. Have a great day, everyone. I should go to the beach because it's hot and Ziggy would like that. So talk to you later.